You know, I'm not a street fighter. I'm not the hockey goon. I'm not a doorman. I'm a professional athlete. This is my sport. This is what I'm doing. At the beginning in Quebec, that was very, very underground. Uh, actually, uh, the one who put MMA, uh, you know, in front of the eyes of everybody that was David Loiseau. That was the first uh, guy from Quebec who fought the, in the UFC, and after that, it was George and me. But uh, you know, all those guys, uh, you know, paved the way for for, for us, for for the young guys, to to uh, to have a dream to go to the UFC before. And all those guys like Sean Pearson, like Steve Vigno, uh, that was that was Jason St. Louis, uh, J Justin Brockman, all those guys, they were, uh, they were the, the old school guys from, uh, from UCC and TKO. TKO was a big organization, you know, we all fought over there. All the Canadian who fought in the UFC fought in TKO. That was, a, that was our uh, diving you know, place for, to, go, to go to the MMA international uh, scene. And uh, that was good. The fan base was amazing over there. And uh, I won two titles, uh, the light heavyweight Canadian title and uh, the world middleweight title over there. And uh, that, was, that, was, that was very fun. My old manager called me and I was supposed to fight uh, Marvin Eastman in the UFC at 50 on the first fight of the prelim. And uh, I, was, I was living in Quebec City. I was training with my first team over there, Team Union under uh, Philippe Agassi. And uh, yeah, we were, we were ready. I was undefeated. I was 5-0. And, oh, and uh, we were ready to go to, to take the big step. And uh, we were uh, in line up to fight uh, Marvin Eastman at the Light of the Challenge. Everybody who start to compete in MMA want to go to, in the UFC. So that was, that was, you know, for me, not finally, because I only had five fights, but had a lot of knockouts. And at the beginning, that was still on the ground. That was in 2004, so that was still on the ground. So I had my chance very, uh, very fast in my, in my early, uh, in my career. But uh, that, was, that was the goal, you know, I was like, yeah, I made it, man. I remember my first fight for sure because that wasn't against Marvin Eastman, that was against Tito Ortiz. So uh, that was kind of crazy experience. Uh, I remember that was in Atlantic City, uh, UFC 50. That was kind of, uh, like I said, underground. Not a lot of people, only one sponsor at that time. Uh, that, was, that was kind of, kind of weird. Uh, that was maybe 50 people at the weigh-in too. Uh, that, was, that was very, very different than, than today. But, uh, the same thing, man. In the locker room, we were, I think, we were 10 in the in, in the same room and the same locker room. That was very very tight, but uh, that was that was amazing. And the people uh, was a lot of people at the venue, but it was a lot of people from Quebec too. Uh, they were traveling to go to see me and uh, and George. The walk to the octagon, I actually, I don't really remember that. That was, I was kind of, of, of twilight zone. That was, that was crazy, just because of the, the situation I was in. Uh, I was fighting my idol at that time. I was fighting a guy who were on my screensaver. I was, you know, for, the, the, the four days before the fight, that was like, just like that. I didn't choose my song, and I just remember the song that, that was a very, very boring song. I was like, man, what kind of song is that? But that's the only thing I remember about the walking. Any questions from the red corner? Touch gloves, come out fighting. I rocked uh, Tito in the first 30 seconds. Tito looking for uh, a little control. Tito stumbled. Caught a right. After that, I was, I was just unreal. Like I said, I was like in Twilight Zone. Everything was in a slow motion. And uh, I wasn't at, at that level at that time. I didn't have the experience. I didn't have the skills to, to wrestle with that guy. So. Uh, yeah, I rocked him, but after that, they did a very, very nice double leg, and uh, I paid a price for that, for sure. <laughs> I'm happy about, about the performance, you know, 100%. That's the best thing that happened to me that night that was losing the fight like that. That's kind of crazy to say, but uh, that was the best thing that happened to me. I made my name with that fight. I made my name over Tito's name, and uh, that was the best thing happened. Uh, we didn't have any conversation, Tito and I, uh, in the locker room, but in the cage, uh, right uh, after the decision, he shook my hand and he said, man, you have a big heart, but you are in the wrong weight division. I was, yeah, <laughs> tell me. And after that, I decided to drop it uh, in the middleweight division. 
top four, that was an amazing experience. You know, I'll do it again if they ask me to do it again. That was the, the, the guys over there, that was, that was amazing. And I'm still close to those guys, Matt Serra, I'm still close to him, to him Edwin DeWeese too. And uh, the thing is, uh, I was on the losing streak, and after that, I went back to the lower organization, and uh, I was on uh, get back on, on the winning streak. And uh, you know, with the performance I did in my first four fights in the UFC, uh, I was better than my UFC record. Actually, I was 0 and 0 and 3 in uh, my uh, UFC record. So the that the concept of that that season that was a comeback. So that was exactly it. That was uh, those guys were better than their record, the UFC record. So uh, they, they called me, they asked me to, to go there. And at that time, um, I think being Canadian, it wasn't my favorite to be in Canadian. They wanted a Canadian guy in the, in the show. And uh, they asked me to go there and I was like, for sure. Yeah, after the Wiz, I was uh, very emotional because we were very, very close uh, in the, in the in the house together, we're on the same team, we're training every day. And uh, I was like, man, finally I can show that I, I you know, I belong in that organization. And uh, uh, I knew it that I was, I will fight uh, Travis Sluter. That will be a very, very hard fight for me because of the style. And uh, you know, I was like, man, I have a lot of work to do <laughs> in the training before, before the fight. But I knew it that I was very, very close to reach my goal to have a title fight. Man, um, Travis Luther fight, that was probably the most painful fight in my life uh, for many reasons. But uh, the main reason is because he said exactly what he wanted to do and he, he did it. Uh, he said, I'm gonna put him on the ground and I'm gonna submit him in the, fir in the first two minutes. And that's exactly what happened. That was very heartbreaking for me because I was very close to have a title fight, but you know it's a learning experience, and uh, you know yeah, I had, I was he beat me because he was a better man that night, uh, but hey, I'm still I'm still in the, in the organization and he's not so. When I fought Nick Fedriz, I knew that he was a very, very powerful striker. Nobody in Militech camp wanted to spar with him because he was knocking uh, everybody out uh, in training. Uh, but at the same time, I just, I was knocking him out. Uh, I was knocked out uh, Kendall Grove, like the, the, the fight before. So I wasn't very confident about, about my power, about my hands. But uh, when he, he landed an uppercut, I remember that was an uppercut for, from the back hand. I uh, was, I opened my eyes and I was like, man, I'm still there. <laughs> let's, let's do it. I can take that by his punches. And uh, yeah, after that, I did a very, very nice combination and uh, I was able to put him away. But uh, yeah, that was probably the most powerful guy I ever fought in my life. The fight with uh, Almeida was, uh, I think that was the most stressful fight for me because that was exactly the same style as my last loss against Travis Luter. So I was like, man, now I have to prove that I improve my game and I'm able to, to, to wrestle and fight on the ground. And the first round was a nightmare for me. <laughs> it took me down and I uh, did a really nice ground and pound. But after that, I suck it up and uh, I was able to, to get back with, the, with the, the, the next two rounds. I won by split decision. and. Uh, I was, that was, for me, that wasn't the most spectacular win, but the most satisfying win for me because of all the situation that the, his style and everybody knew that the, you know, the wrestling and my grand game at that time was my biggest weakness. And I was able to, to win against a guy that, uh, you know, a legit BJJ black belt, five-time world champion. For me, that was one of my favorite wins in my career. Uh, why I made the move to welterweight is because of Alessio Sakara. When I fought uh, Anderson Silva, he has his uh, invincibility aura uh, around him. He was like on unbeatable and uh, that was kind of uh, kind of scary but at the same time we did learn by watching his fights that all his opponent before was losing before the fight you know you, you could see that in, in their eyes and that with the attitude and the body language so we were like 
man, if you knock me out, I'm not gonna remember it anyway. So let's do it. Let's try to knock him out, not, not being scared of that guy. And he's a human like me, you know, he's made of blood and bone like me. So let's do it. And uh, I think that's why in the first two rounds, especially in the first round, it was a little bit more hesitated because uh, he saw that I wasn't, I wasn't scared. I was pushing the pace. I was controlling the center of the cage. And uh, you know, I, I'm a puncher, so I always have a chance to finish the fight in any rounds. But I knew it that if I go to the third and fourth and fifth round, that's gonna be in my advantage because he, that was that was the first first time he went to the third round in the UFC. So that's why I was preparing myself to to watch a camera and said, oh, "All right, we are in the third round." But at the same time, the second round, I knew that my knee was uh, was done, and uh, that was kind of heartbreaking. When I started the third round, I knew it. I was like, "Oh man, okay, w what I'm gonna do?" Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh, no. His knee just snapped. Okay. Oh done. no! Done. You know, I tried to hide it, but uh, you know, I, uh, my, my, my knee was, uh, wasn't strong enough to, to continue the fight. Why I made the move to welterweight is because of Alessio Sakara. When I saw him <laughs> the night of the fight, I was like, man, that's not the same guy that the last night at the way, and he was so big. and. Uh, me, that was with the knowledge, with the nutrition, cutting weight, and all those things. Those guys at 185 are so huge now. So that was my time to, uh, to make the sacrifice about, about the diet and all those things. I, I thought I knew nutrition before, but now when, I'm, when you work with professional nutritionists and all those guys, uh, you know, I saw that I didn't know nothing. And uh, I, I dropped to 170, and that was the, that was the, the best decision uh, I could make at that time. The only time I've been very frustrated in the fight, it's my first fight at 170 against Bobby Volker because I was giving him everything and he was still going forward and he was still walking towards me. I was like, man, what I have to do? Seriously, I gave him my best punch, a powerful punch. I was knocking the 205 guys with that kind of punch, punches and he was still going forward and I was, I, in the third round, I was very, very frustrated. I was like, man, what, what do I have to do, man? This guy is like uh, an alien, a robot. He's going forward all the time, you know? And I was starting to doubt about myself, about my hands, about my power. I was like, what the hell is going on? And that was, that was the only fight I've been very, very frustrated. They told me to just to calm down and uh, trying to, to be more accurate and trying to just move it around and not getting cut and not getting more frustrated because more you're frustrated, more you're getting tired. And uh, that's why in the third round, in the, 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 last, the last minute of, of the third round, I was dead tired because I tried to do it, to do too much in, uh, to finish the fight and uh, I wasn't able. The difference between uh, being contestant and tough and coach, it's uh, there's 10 times more work to be a coach. <laughs> you have to prepare the training, the game plan, the matchup. You have to adjust yourself to every fighter uh, in, uh, in your team. You know what, the thing is, uh, on paper, we knew it that we were better than the Australian guys, but fight is a fight, you never know. I fucking hate losing, I don't know about you guys. I fucking hate it. You know, that was business, and uh, my two guys before me at the tough finally won. So, <laughs> two, two Canadian guys was the winner, so I was like, man, I have to win, man. I have to, I have to prove that we are really better than those guys. And, uh, you know, being, uh, being a champion on tough, the two Canadians put me a little bit more pressure when I fought, I fought Kai Nog. But, uh, you know, I did pretty well, and uh, we, we swept out the entire season. For the winner by unanimous decision, Patrick the Predator Coche! Stephen Thompson, this is uh, complicated. This is very complicated uh, fighter to, to fight because there's so many reasons why. Uh, it's very hard to, tr to find a training partner who's gonna be able to, to do exactly what he's doing in training. So you need uh, a minute or two to adjust about his style. You see his style with that right leg, the front leg. That's the difference between the way he fights and a lot of other guys fight. In that fight, 
I don't want to take anything away from, from Thompson, but I think I, I lost the fight more than he won the fight. Uh, I was too respectful to him. You know, we know each other since a long time. We've been training together a couple of years ago. But I don't know, I didn't have the, I didn't have the, uh, the, the, uh, the rage inside me to go there and try to bully him because that was, that was the key, that was the game plan. We wanted to bully him and not trying to be more technical than him because he's so technical, he's going left and right and his, his stand up is so, so nice and accurate. So, you know, I missed the, the game plan in that fight and that's why, you know, I lost, I'm pretty sure because of that. The final sequence with Berkman, he was moving Southpaw and an orthodox the entire fight, and I was I was waiting for him to to stay on the orthodox because I knew that he has a lazy jab, and you know my my strength is the, the over end, so I was waiting and waiting, and finally in the third round he decided to stay on the orthodox, and I just went over uh, over his, his left shoulder. Oh, when I saw him on the ground, I was like I felt I, I heard the crowd was. Insane! It was very, very loud, and gave me another, <laughs> another chance to to get the power inside me. And I went there in the third round. I felt pretty good. I was in really, really good shape. That's it. Lights up the arena here in Saskatoon. I didn't feel Brockman break in that fight. I just feel that I was in control. I felt very, very good. And uh, I was like, man, fine. That that's who I am. That's what I'm doing. I knock people out. That's what. That's why I'm in the UFC. Because at the beginning, that's what why people know me. Because uh, I was knocking people out, and I was like, finally, I'm back. I'm back on that. Uh, after so many years, I think that was that was in 2008. The last time I was knocking somebody out in the UFC. So uh, it felt pretty good. And I was the first. I was the first one to to knock a Berkman out. And, and he has so many experience. A veteran like that, you know, it's always the same thing. When you knock people people out, the, the five seconds after uh, the, the fight, you feel like the most powerful guy in the world. You just you just look around you and you feel, man, I did it. I'm very very strong. I'm not the most powerful guy in the world. But after that, you realize that okay, you, you you're you're just happy and that's okay. Uh, the culture of the fighting, yeah, it changed a lot. Uh, talk about uh, the, in the locker room. Saunders is a lit, he's a legit fighter, man. He's very, very dangerous. He's long, but I was expecting him to be more aggressive on his feet. I was, uh, we, were, we were preparing some counter attacks against his kicks, against his, against his, uh, his jab, and he was very, very shy about, uh, about going very aggressive in a, in a stand up fight. So that's why in the first, first minute, uh, that was very, very calm because I was waiting, I was waiting, I was waiting, and uh, he, was, he was doing the same thing. And uh, I knew that he, he was a very, very good fighter on, on the ground, very uh, legit BJJ black belt. The thing is, uh, I'm very confident about my ground game now. He, he surprised me with the, with the takedown, with the trip. So when I was on my bike, I was like, all right, okay, that's, I know you have a good guard, so let's, let's show mine now. And uh, I was uh, very close to got the, the armbar. He did a very really good, I, I did a, a little mistake in the, the armbar, but uh, he did a really good defense at the same time. But after that, when I was on top, we were so ready for the river guard. We were so ready for the, that kind of guard that this guy has. And uh, we were passing the half guard and all those things. And uh, I was saying before in the, in the interview, I was like, half guard kills everything. And I showed that. And in the, in the second round, I felt that it was slowing down a little bit. And I was getting more accurate. And uh, when, I, when I landed the first uppercut and he tried to grab the, the, the clinch, I felt the clinch wasn't, wasn't very tight. So. I was like hockey style, man. I went, I went hockey style. I went to a couple, uh, maybe 14s uppercuts, and uh, finally got the, the, the second knockout in the row. Pushing oh, good combination. Nice uppercut, good clinch to the body now. Oh, Big ben, punches ben by Kote. Hurt, hurt real bad. to finish it right here, right now. Hands hey, hey, all hey. over. Oh, Patrick, man. the Predator, Kote. There's always a moment 
just the night of the fight after when you're in the hotel and you get back in your, in, in your bed and you, you lay down with, after a couple of whiskey or scotch or something like that, that and you just very relaxed and you realize, man, I just did it again, that's cool. And now you, when you're alone with yourself or with your wife, I wasn't with my, with my wife in the, in the, in the room, you, it's very calm, there's no more noise around you and you just, now you realize that, oh man, life is good, life is good. When you win, life is good. Now me, I'm like the last Moikan of the Canadian MMA scene. Uh, I'm the longest right now Canadian uh, fighter in the UFC, active actually. I think with the knowledge, with all those years, uh, taking care of your body, the nutrition, and uh, the experience too, and I, I just stopped to get worry about little things too. I'm just going there, having fun. Uh, I, I say that many times, I build my after career, so now I'm doing that, I'm just having fun. And I think it showed that when I fight, I'm having a blast and I'm getting, I'm, I'm looser and I'm, and I'm not scared to try a uh, different thing than before, like, like wrestling, like jiu-jitsu. I know now that if I try something, I'm not gonna be in a, in a bad position. I know, I know enough stuff today that uh, I'm not scared to, to try anything. What I want the fan to remember me, what it's, um, you know, I always try to give my best. You know, I, don't, I never try to be, uh, to be somebody else. I always try to be, to be myself and try to represent the sport well, trying to represent myself well, the company well. So I try to educate people who don't like that sport, uh, how hard it is and uh, what sacrifice you have to make to be in the, in the, in the best in the world. So, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I never did that to be famous or to be rich. It's, you know, being in the UFC come with a certain popularity, but if I can take that and use that to, to learn an experience and to teach the experience to, to, uh, to somebody, uh, I'll do that, I'll try to do that. And I'm very proud of, of what I did in my career. I, I gave 12 years of my life to the UFC and I'm still there and I'm not planning to retire soon.